the page you're looking at right now, if you don't know much about the Hebrew language or reading the Hebrew Bible, you might think because there's Hebrew characters that this is a page from the Hebrew Bible. This is from the Talmud. What does the Talmud have to say about the historical Jesus? The significance of the Talmud confirms the historicity of Jesus' life because the Talmud, as you're going to see, speaks about him within a historical context. The Talmud even confirms his death by the method of crucifixion. By the way, the Israelite method of crucifixion would have been, excuse me, of execution would have been stoning, not hanging on a cross. The significance of the Talmudic record indicates that Jesus did do miraculous things, but they attribute his power to the devil. Before I even go further, we arrived at somewhere highly significant. Now I'm refixing my cap to put on my spiritual hat, take off the historical hat, and put on the spiritual cap for a moment and say, I'm about to show you in a couple of moments that not only does the Talmud confirm the existence of Jesus, but they even validate the miracles he performed. What's most interesting about that is that the overall picture that the Talmud paints of Jesus is very bad. The rabbis of the Talmud do not like him. They consider him a rebel. They consider him an idolater. They consider him wicked, and they speak very badly about him. So I have a question. If anyone has a motive to make sure that the imaginary Jesus stays imaginary, it certainly would have been the writers of the Talmud. So why do they speak about him in a historical context when they hate him? Here's an even better question. How does the Talmudic authors describe Jesus with such hate when there's no known interaction of them with him? If he didn't exist and they never had interaction with him, where's the hatred coming from? Why do they speak so disparagingly about him? Why do they employ the most pejorative terms and hateful rhetoric about Jesus all throughout the Talmud if he never existed? Because in my common sense, how do you hate something that's not even real? In my common sense, how do you place or develop hatred for something that doesn't even exist? It would have been easier for the Talmudic writers to argue and provide evidence for him not existing, as opposed to spending several tractates, the Aramaic term for chapters of the Talmud. It would have been less time consuming for them to just simply say he didn't exist, as opposed to writing in several places throughout the Talmud about how bad of a person he is. And even to say he did perform miracles, but to attribute it to the work of the devil. That's interesting. I'll tell you why that's interesting first in putting on my spiritual cap, because being objective and being someone that does not believe in the entire narrative of the New Testament, and that is not news to anyone that follows my work, I would want to say, well, why are the Talmud writers admitting that he did miracles if he didn't do miracles. The Talmudic writers have every reason to negate his existence. They have every reason to negate that he's a miracle worker. 
And in clear contra distinction to those points, they admit he existed and they admit he performed miracles, except that they say his existence shows bad character and that his miracle working was really that he was in concert with the devil. Take away all of the religious innuendo from what they're admitting, and here is the common denominator in their narrative. They agree he lived, and they agree he performed miracles. So now we got a debate. The debate is on now. And I say this as an Old Testament Israelite. The debate is on now because people who had one-on-one -on -one interactions with him are all reporting that he existed and that he performed miracles. Everybody that's had a one-on-one -on -one interaction, their common denominator is that he existed and performed miracles. Those who did not have a one-on-one -on -one interaction with him, they just say he existed and they don't speak towards the miracles, which you can expect because they never had interaction with him or interaction with people who knew him. So now the debate is on. And I could add to the equation, it's now debatable whether or not he performed miracles. Because from the Talmudic vantage point, no one's denying that he performed miracles in the Talmud. No one's denying that he existed. By the way, the Talmudic writers hate him and describe him with the greatest of disdain, which means they have every motive to deny he exists, and more importantly, every motive to deny his miracles. And what do they do? The exact opposite. Agree he exists and agree he performs miracles, except they paint his existence as a wicked person and they paint his miracles as coming from the devil. You know, mama didn't raise no fool over here. And I got to tell you, whether or not I personally believe he performed miracles, and if I could be brutally honest, I don't personally believe he performed miracles. But being objective, I got to say, it's debatable. Even the people who hate him the most contemporary with him having one-on-one -on -one interactions don't even deny that he performed miracles. Thumb up the video and share the live. They indicate the Talmudic records that Jesus gathered and amassed many converts from among the Israelite people. And here are the Talmudic references to Jesus. This is directly taken from my notes, guys. In Sanhedrin 43a, the Talmud calls Jesus a sorcerer among his disciples. Why do they call him a sorcerer? Well, a sorcerer is someone who's believed to have supernatural abilities. The Talmudic writers speak of Jesus in a historical context and even admit supernatural capabilities. Now, I personally don't care if you or anyone doesn't believe he worked a miracle or had anything supernatural going on. What I personally care about and as an objective scholar I'm looking at is here are a group of people, the rabbis of the Talmud, who clearly show great hatred and disdain for Jesus, speaking of him in a historical context as existing. And not only that, to add insult to injury and fuel to the fire, they don't even deny that he performed miracles except to say it came from the devil. That says a hell of a lot. So the debate is worthy at this point, at least from a religious perspective on the miracle worker. You can't really debate from a historical perspective on him performing miracles without historical data. But from a religious perspective, the Talmud just provided enough evidence to have a debate on whether or not from a religious perspective, he was a miracle worker. I thought I'd add that. 
The Talmud also says that his disciples healed in his name. They didn't say that the disciples were faking it. They didn't say the disciples were tricking people. They said that they were healing in his name. They call him a Torah teacher. They regard him as a son or disciple that turned out badly, as a frivolous disciple who practiced magic and turned to idolatry, Sanhedrin 107b. They say that he will burn in hell or his punishment is in hell, Gittin 56b and 57a. They refer to his execution, even referring to it happening on the 14th of Nisan the eve of Passover, just as recorded in the New Testament Gospels. They even refer to him being born of a woman called Mary. So I say this. I say this very clearly. All right. The Talmud on how Jesus died. The Babylonian Talmud is a commentary on Jewish laws composed between AD 500 and 600. Therein is a text about Jesus' death, Tractate Sanhedrin 43a, where it contains this passage. Listen to what the Talmud says in Sanhedrin 43a. It says, Jesus was hanged on Passover Eve. 40 days previously, the herald had cried he is being led out for stoning because he practiced sorcery and led Israel astray and enticed them into apostasy. Whosoever has anything to say in his defense, let him come and declare it. As nothing was brought forward in his defense, he was hanged on Passover Eve. Guys, this is not recorded by rabbis in the New Testament. This is not recorded anywhere else this is recorded right in the Talmud I want you to just use your common sense just a little bit un poquito trying out my Spanish in this moment the Talmudic writers the rabbis of the Talmud who really hate Jesus as you just literally saw and I'll even point it out they hate him so much that in one of their sources, they say that he's going to hell and will be punished in hell. They speak of him as the son of Mary. But me knowing the Talmud so much, I can tell you something that is not in that screenshot I just showed you, because I know the Talmud so much. The Talmud refers to Mary as a whore. Are you listening to me? The Talmud doesn't just say that Jesus' mother is Mary. The Talmud calls her a whore. Why? Remember, the Synoptic Gospels cast doubt on who the father of Jesus is. The Synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, state that Joseph was mindful to put Mary away because she was with child and he had not known her. So the Talmudic writers literally call Mary a whore. It's right in the Talmud. So use your common sense. Talmudic writers have every reason to relegate him as mythical if he truly doesn't exist. Many of the rabbis speaking of him in the Talmud lived when he lived. Others lived shortly after he lived, but many of them lived while he lived. If he didn't exist, no need to spend so much time and ink and use up so much parchment to develop so much hatred for him when they could simply argue from all of their available evidence since they are living in his period, so they have enough evidence to show that he doesn't exist, to demonstrate and show me that he doesn't exist. Instead, not only do they validate his existence, albeit pejoratively, but they even call him a miracle worker. 
a performer of miracles, albeit pejoratively. I hope y'all are using your common sense. By the way, you don't get more objective on this topic than from the time I started this dialogue till now. I admitted I don't entirely believe the New Testament. I don't. I hold the gospel's account of Jesus with great respect because I see him as someone who aligns with Torah. Most people in my community that I come from would throw stones at me for saying that. If that doesn't point towards my objectivity, I don't know what the hell else will. You don't get more objective on this topic than me speaking of it, knowing my background and admitting to you the absolute truth. The Talmudic writers have every motive necessary to want to see and make Jesus fictional and mythical. But they still say that he exists. No one contemporaneous with the rabbis of the Talmud contests their works either. Just like Josephus writing about Jesus and in, within a historical context, no contemporary writers speaking out against that. The rabbis of the Talmud who live while Jesus lived and some shortly thereafter, nobody contemporary with them says, wait, what the hell y'all talking about? He didn't even exist. That's something you need to think about. If you care about the truth. So not only does the Talmud regard Jesus as historical, the Talmud co-signs that Jesus performed miracles, albeit in a pejorative sense. They also co-sign his dying the eve of Passover just as described in the New Testament. The Talmudic writers, as you see me right here, they have every motive to relegate Jesus as an ahistorical character. The term ahistorical, literally meaning not existing, right? It's an academic term. If I'm calling someone mythical, the academic term is to say that they're ahistorical. They do, they do not exist in history. The term a would be negative in that sense. Ahistorical, you didn't exist. All right? They had every motive to say that he didn't exist. They had every motive to relegate him as an ahistorical character, and yet they did not do that. They insisted on making him historical. The first fact readily apparent is that there were Jews for the, responsible for the Babylonian Talmud who had every motive for wanting to eradicate Christ from history did not. That is telling. The historicity of Jesus is conceded by them. This is powerful testimony since a few modern skeptics, very much a minority within their ranks, deny that Jesus ever lived. And let me take the opportunity to remind people that no matter how much you personally believe Jesus doesn't exist, no matter how much you personally believe that he didn't perform miracles, no matter how much you believe that any narrative or historical record speaking about him within a historical context is true, one thing you still have to know, and I'm going to be the one to tell you if you didn't hear this before, the scholarly consensus is that he existed. The same scholars that don't believe in the miracles that is said that he performed, the same scholars that don't believe that he had a supernatural birth, the same scholars that don't believe that there was an Abraham, Isaac, or a Jacob, or an Adam, or an Eve, all agree there was a historical Jesus that walked the earth. So it's an extremely silly and fallacious argument to say that 
If you accept a historical Jesus living, you must accept everything told about him. That's silly. Because all of you can see me right now. And some of you out there have met me in person. So you know I exist. Does everybody believe every single thing told and spoken of me? You all know that people like Donald Trump exist. Some of you out there may have met him. I have met him personally. Do I believe everything told and spoken about him? No. Did he and does he exist? Yes. So then do you understand how silly it is to make one and the same believing in a story told about someone and equate that with believing that someone exists. I can know and believe that you exist and not believe a single story told about you. You cannot make it one and the same. It's silly, fallacious, and scholarly unfounded.